Hey everybody. So today I thought I'd talk especially about homesteading with a broken leg. Now, I could never do this without my husband because he's been taking care of the animals, doing all the chores, washing the dishes, and um, carrying the laundry up and down the stairs. And um, I've been able to do a few things, but it's still been very hard for me. And I imagine that if you have a broken leg, you're in the same boat as I am. Um, because most people who break their leg are not people who just sit around all day. You know, you don't get a broken leg sitting on the couch watching TV. So if you have a broken leg like I do, then chances are you were in the midst of, you know, the crazy life that you lead. And then all of a sudden it changed and it went from... A crazy busy life to doing nothing um, or you know respectively nothing like my daughter would say that I was it was like I was balancing 3,000 things on one hand and it felt like it and now it's all I can do to try to think of things to do I think it's very important for those of us who are used to doing a lot and who kind of gained some um, like it's who we are we're not lazy people and it it hurts me <laughs> to think of myself as being lazy and something my sister said which really i should take to heart more is that um sitting down and healing so that you can get all the way better and do more is not lazy that's something important um but still just sitting there is is awful so that's why I'm doing this video today. Um, but I will show you what I have done to help pass the time and maybe that will help you. So the first thing is that even though I can't go up and down the stairs with the laundry, um, my husband brings up the clean clothes and then I fold it. Um, now that's been folded for a few days now, so it's gotten kind of wrinkly because I can't carry it and put it away. So. If my daughter doesn't put away her clothes like I ask, then, then there they stay. <laughs> but I have a, a new load right here in front of me, um, and I can take care of folding those a bit. I've also been sowing some seeds. Um, now, before, when it was cold, so if you're watching this and it's the middle of winter and you're like, oh, I wish I could, but it's winter. Well, take heart because I started in February with like our right in the middle of our ice storm. Um, and here's how you do it. You just start winter sewing. And the benefit of that is that if you're winter sewing, you don't have to worry about um, the seeds germinating at the right time or whatever else. You let nature take care of itself. And when the, the soil inside your containers get warm enough, then your seeds will germinate and they'll grow and they'll be protected in that little environment that you've created. So let's take a look at the winter sowing. Not much in here. I did see one that was really full. I believe it was this one over here. And I think those are broccoli sprouts. And yeah, a, a little bee sprout in there. The beginnings of a sprout in there. There's some more. Yeah, that just needs some time to catch up and grow. Now I've also sowed some um, tomato plants and whatnot. Those were not winter sown. They're just early starters. And these were just planted recently. These are the tomato plants. We're gonna sell the sprouts and plant a whole bunch. We also have some over here. And we have some over here. So we'll be well stocked with tomatoes. And I don't think we're done planting the starter tomatoes. Since I'm doing seedlings, um, a dollar a piece. I've been 
advertising a little bit. You know, I've just kind of told a couple people and then I'm slowly putting it out there so I don't get inundated all at once because that would be difficult. But um, hopefully that'll help me stay a little bit busier and I'll be able to get more done. I've tried really hard to keep a positive, upbeat um, attitude. It's, it's hard some days. That's not to say I'm always happy. Um, last night I sobbed, you know, um, yesterday I was able to get outside and do some things and I didn't do much at all. Um, but it hurt like, like it did those first couple weeks after the break and it's been about a month now. So I just sobbed because I didn't even do that much and it was just hard. I also took this time to plan our 2021 garden. And I was in such denial. I was like, I'll be better before the garden. But, you know, we're in zone 6B and it's March and lots of people are putting in their spring veggies and whatnot. And um, we don't even have ours plowed yet. So, so we're going to do a lot of container gardening instead. You know, surprise. <laughs> um, but hopefully we'll still be able to get a lot in the garden later. Um, Brandon will have to take point on that and really get ahead. Um, and then when I can, I'll be out there doing what I can. But if you want to see a video to that, I'll link that in the description. That video is a little bit crazy because I had, I had all this pain. It was just after I broke my leg. So like my mind was a little bit cloudy. Plus I was taking the prescri prescription strength medicine and, um, so I couldn't think clearly enough to edit it properly and it cuts out in the middle of me talking and it's terrible. Um, but until I can, you know, <laughs> do a new one and hopefully a better one, um, I'm afraid that's what we're stuck with. Finally, the biggest help has been having supportive people. So you really don't want to be around a lot of negative Nancys because it's already really hard to just sit there and watch as your husband or possibly your wife or whomever is taking up all the responsibilities and you're just alone. It kind of plays with your head. Um, so I have been very blessed by people coming to bring us some food or coming to help us clean or um, whatever else. I highly suggest that you accept help. That is um, very, very important and rather humbling, I'll admit, but, <laughs> um, but if people want to help and you need help, then um, it'll just go further towards um, building that community that I think we all need. Um, and I did a video about that and about when self-sufficiency just isn't enough because sometimes we need each other. I also homeschool, so I've been homeschooling my girl and working on lesson plans and prepping for next year and planning our course for that. Um, so that keeps me a little bit busy. And then if you've been watching our videos, you know that we're a, a Christian family and uh, it's been really good to sit back and realize, like I would have never chosen this for myself, for my husband, for my daughter. Um, I'm a busy person and I, I lead a lot of, you know, work in the home. Um, I'm, I'm busy and to be just sitting here and resting is, is hard and not just for me, but for my husband and for my daughter. And they're all understanding. They're all being super patient and wonderful. Brandon hasn't complained once about taking care of me. And Abby has only complained a little bit about <laughs> helping out more. Um, but I mean, she's a, a child, so what do you expect? Um, but it's been really neat to realize that even though we wouldn't want this or we wouldn't choose this, we should surrender to what, what God has for us. And that, um, you know, maybe this will help Abby to be more mature and responsible and, um, I already know Brandon's appreciating everything I did before more, so there's there's that benefit. Um, and 
we know that God promises to use everything for good. And in the grand scheme of things, this isn't really that much. Um, it feels like it right now, but it, this too shall pass. <laughs> so while we've been talking, I've been able to finish another load of laundry. I wonder what Brandon's been up to. I love to see the chickens out foraging. I love the longer days and the warmer temperatures. I think I got up to 69. Yeah, he's protecting this lady. What kind of crow is that? That's like a dinosaur shriek or something. Whoa. Careful there. There's the feisty one getting mean to the ducks. Run, ducks! Run! Waddle faster! Our ice or browns are getting big. You're not an ice or brown. These guys. Let's see if we got any eggs today. The little guys like to stay in here, and I actually pre prefer it that way to the eggs. Oh yeah! Jackpot! One, two, five eggs today, and one's still warm. That's excellent! Alright, let me grab these. Very good. I wonder if we got any more. We do! We have, wow, six eggs! That's a new record. Ugh. I don't know if we want that one. I mean, it would wash off. If nothing else, I'll give it to the pig. The pigs like eggs. Alright, let me I can grab it and turn this off. This egg's actually a little bit too nasty. So I'll just give the big guy this egg. Hey, big guy. Where's Miss Piggy at? Here. Have a farm fresh egg. I'm not going to pay and feed you that. Oh, here, here. Here she comes. Eat it. What do you think? Well, I think we have a winner. Alright, I'll get you guys some commodity mix here in just a second. Hey goats, you didn't eat any of your hay? You got plenty of water. You want the commodity mix too, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Jenny. You're welcome. I, I saved her life earlier. She had a big stick stuck in her mouth and she couldn't get it out. And she couldn't breathe, so she lay down on her back, and I was able to get it out. You're welcome. Anytime. Anytime you need a stick pulled out of your mouth, you just come see me. Oh. Well, I think they were. Did you pick her up? <laughs> I think she wants to play. Careful not to fall back. <laughs> hey, that's cheating! <laughs> okay. She's getting too close to my hand. Like, now you have to chase me to get it. Come on, Abby. You know you want this. You're just too slow to get it. I, I have her. Go get her. I'm gonna film the goats, but right, right now go play with Jenny. Okay. <laughs> you sound distressed. What's your problem? You got plenty of water. You got plenty of food. Oh, hope. You look so much better. I'm still 
still got a ways to go though. I'm gonna put you guys out Sunday. I just need you to hold out that long. Okay, meat birds are all taken care of. They have food and they have water and uh excuse me. Only Cornish cross hens in here. You have your own water and your own food on the other side of the chicken house. Excuse me. Out you go. Out you go. Okay. We harvest these guys Sunday. They're not as big as we like. We got them from Royal King. We didn't get them from a hatchery. But uh, I'm going to order some more soon, hopefully. And there'll be a jumbo Cornish cross. So, we have, we'll have plenty of chicken stuck in our freezer. Our homegrown chicken that'll be much cleaner and nicer. My one regret is that we couldn't get out, get them out on pasture um, with the green grass because there was none to be had at the time. We'll have to settle with grain fed chickens. But next time that'll change and we'll have them out on a uh, chicken tractor and they can be eating the grass and bugs and that makes it nice yellow fat on chickens that people like okay you guys enjoy well it's gonna rain soon so I think they're all gonna be heading at, heading in soon I could try to herd them in but why do that when they'll do it naturally right I think the pigs have gotten the idea that they're only getting the commodity mix. And they seem fairly happy with it. I'll get you guys some corn later. Alright. I guess that's it for the day. We're done. I feel so very happy. I'm ecstatic getting six eggs. And with even more to come. Alright, that's all. Bye-bye.